That's down in Detroit, Michigan today uh, at the, as they say, the territory. Territory, Northwest Ordinance Territory. We got a good show today. Um, I'm excited about it in that so much is going on. So many conversations are going on. I think we are have been bamboozled. We, we've been bamboozled on the old who, who we are, where we're going. Who sent you there? What are you going to do when you get there? Our lives have been flipped into a, a, a turmoil. And the direction, is it's, it's, it's interesting to me how these corporations, and I'm going to just call it corporations because we're talking about black and white devils, evil ones. Uh, international banksters whose only intent is to stay rich, be rich, stay rich, take any life it may it may take, take as many lives as it may take in order to stay in the power position of wealth. This is not a new problem. This is not something that, uh, what can we say, last 10 years, last five years, says Ferguson, there's no deadline or there's no startup period on it. I think since man has been here, the desire for to to be rich or to be wealthy has been here, but more than that, to connive, steal, murder, loot, rape, do anything you can to become an individual of wealth. We're caught in it right now. And I've I've listened to numerous of individuals, and that largest period or not largest number would be the individuals who have access to the news media, social media. They they work these these blackies. They're popping up everywhere. They're working with these uh, news uh, corporations all over the United States. And I guess you know there's only for media outlet, outlets in the United States, and three of them are owned by a non-citizen of the United States, um, uh, Rupert Murdoch, and they control all of the information that you get. It's controlled by them. They are now up against the most powerful spirit are the most powerful competition that life can ever uh, think of. They're, they're up against the spirit of the mighty creator. And they are holding on to their uh, earthly elements. Uh, the conversation I had today, one reason why I was excited to get on the air, it was agreed upon between myself and a 35, 37-year-old young man, that the earth is 100% devil control, 100%. 100% devil control. So we could almost say out of the 360-degree circumference of the mighty uh, circle, the lower 180, is controlled completely by the devil. We are thrown into the lower 180, and by the grace of your creator, you must crawl out and and go into the upper, the upper 180. Now, if you, it would be nice if you would, if you're sitting down at the computer or sitting down. Just draw a circle and draw a line completely through the circle. The upper part around the outside do go a 360, but in the upper part of the circle where you drew the line is 180 and the lower is 180. That's where you get to the 360. Now, since the creator, everyone's creator, is in the upper 180, Everyone's spiritual climb to divine truth is in the upper 180. But we're all born into the lower 180.
because we are captured in the United States. We are captured at birth by the devil. Your birth certificate, the whole ramification of your birth certificate creates the lower 180 of your existence on earth. Your mother was duped from the beginning. The baby showed up is duped, has no idea. The daddy, may he be a father or a baby's daddy, it doesn't matter. He's put completely out of the equation because he doesn't appear at all on the birth records. And they have the audacity to call the mother an informant. She's in a box that's checked informant. We need to understand this. We need to be able to look at this and grow out of it and start climbing the ladder to heaven. This is not a religious approach. This is not something that uh, I'm going to church now. No, no, no. The hell with the church. I mean that. The church, as you know it, was never set up to be what it is. Never. Say preacher, you wonder, where did that come from? When I say minister, by your ignorance or by the divine, no, what can I call it? Your, your education level. It teaches you automatically that your minister is your preacher, your, 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 your stair, stairway to heaven. I should have had that song ready to play by the by the OJs. Stair West, stair, stairway to heaven. You've heard it. Everybody knows about it. Okay. Stairwell to heaven. Stairway to heaven. The European knows this. He he is has been delivered as a deficiency. He doesn't have the knowledge and the uh, wisdom that we have. So what do you do? What did he do? He stumped our growth by snatching us at birth, demanding we go to his schools and through European psychology taught us to be educated dummies. It doesn't matter. You can see it today. As surely as yesterday, when this fourth grade teacher, listen to this. This is a good example. A fourth grade teacher in McKinney, Texas, had the audacity to go on social media. And not only did she support the police officer that manhandled a 14-year-old teenager, female, she went further to say that those people, speaking of the so-called Negro, should be separated from us. We should go back to the 50s and 60s. This lady has been teaching fourth grade. She's a teacher with 16 years seniority. Teaching the children, your children, and you wonder why we can't get out of this hocus-pocus trick bag? And then the news media has the nerve to go find mothers who have children in her class, and they put on the news that she was a good teacher to this madness. We need to stop crying about killing our youth the brutality of the police department, that's all they have to protect the corporation. They're doing to us through the police department what they do to the Middle East through drones, uh, I want to say SWAT, but military attacks, same thing. 
They label them terrorists, and then we side with them. And then we look in our own communities, and we have people who we have the audacity to be drafted in the military and go overseas to fight to preserve the brutality, so the United States says, of those countries, and yet those inhabitants of the countries are here vandalizing our neighborhood. This is what they're fighting about over there. Let me say that again. The United States goes into a country and they create the 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 illusion that the government of that country is mistreating the, the people of that country. And they'll use any type of excuse to, to, to make this a reality. They'll find snitches. You can always find a snitch. There's always doubt in someone's mind. If he's not rich, he wants to be rich. So you can just play him up and say, this is what you do. We need to protect this person. We don't know that person. So let's just say that that person is a uh, Egyptian. Or better yet, let's say that he was a Palestinian. That'll get closer to you. So that Palestinian wanted to be part of the government so he could control and or live a better life. So the government plays him up, tells us in America that that government is against this wonderful person with his children, with his mammy, with his wife, with his daughters, and we need to go over there and teach them democracy. Let's not leave out Obama. He's the president. He knows what I'm talking about. Well, let's don't get hung up because we got a blackie up there. He's not a blackie of your definition. He's a blackie of their definition better known as Uncle Remus Boule, Uncle Tom-ass nigga. That's what they got. And they got a damn good one. I don't care what he does. He understands the pain. He understands the, the anger. He understands the madness of our communities. And he has done literally done nothing. Now, he has his flunkies. He's got those Jesse Jacksons. Those Tom Joyners, those, uh, I can't name them, all them niggas. You know what I'm talking about. Them black-ass niggas, that's what I'm talking about. He got them all that say the same thing. We got to vote. We got to register. We, we, don't, we can't be thugs. Fighting is not the way. Praying at night, marching on Washington, all of that bullshit from the 60s is where we got to be. You don't have an argument. Where, where did that come from? Did you vote no? Well, then you can't complain about Obama. Yes, I can. Because Obama and all them other peckers up there are on my land. I am the, the true American. None of them. Even Obama is not a true American. Can anybody tell me where he was born? They can tell you where he wasn't born. And then now they try to say, well, he was born in uh, Hawaii. When did Hawaii become a state? When did it become not a state? They don't talk about that. It became a state in 1959. It became not a state, I think, I believe, in 1978. I believe that was the year that they withdrew from the Union. That, that's, a, that's, that's, that's minor. That's something that Fox News would deal with, try to present an argument from that. I'm talking about the future of our children. I'm a I'm a father, a grandfather, a great grandfather. I still have children coming into this world. 
They need a better break than I got. They need to know who they really are. I understand the nation of Islam is planning on a 50-year anniversary. Now listen to this. A 50-year anniversary. They want to go back to Washington, D.C. in October. I was there in 95. I don't even have to discuss. You know what went on. Close to 200, I mean 2 million black men stood peacefully more than 12 to 24 hours in Washington, D.C. Begging for attention. Begging for attention. We're living worse conditions today than we did in 1995. So who heard it? I heard today, you may talk about it in a little more in depth, but I heard today they're talking about the NAACP is going to, uh, tomorrow they're going to uh, announce, Monday, not tomorrow, Monday, that they want to do a march on Washington. They want to walk from Selma, Alabama, to Washington, D.C., 868 miles. Think about that. Farrakhan said the march in 95 was a march of atonement, which is basically a march of forgiveness. Let's try and live together. He's saying now that the march on Washington in in uh, uh, 15, they're not going to be begging or asking. They're going to be telling them what to do. Believe me, I know you don't. On YouTube, you put in, go to YouTube and put in Louis Farrakhan at the Breakfast Club. The Breakfast Club. I think it's Truth to Power Breakfast Club. It's a one hour and 48 minute interview. And I say that interview should have been done in 95. I was up. It, it, it swept me up like it did 200, 2 million other black men. But do you think the government paid any attention? Listen to me. If you can't get in your, you can't fight this battle if you don't know what the battle is about. If you don't know the parameters and rules of the battle, you're going to get murdered. Some of our people today are so upset that they want to attack the forces to be. And I'm going to tell you, don't do that. We don't need guns. We don't need riots. Nobody wins in a riot but the corporations. No one wins but the corporations. And in hindsight, every so-called riot, especially the premier race riots, was only engineered and the benefactor of it was the corporations, every one of them, even the ones they give us, like Tulsa, Rosewood, Wilmington, North Carolina. Not only do they cover up their devilment, their ruthlessness, they pay their agents to support their activity. Ron, why are you so mad at ministers? I'm not mad at a minister. I think he's an ass, every one of them. I ain't mad at him. And if I wanted to get real honest about it, he knows what he's doing. He's not an idiot. None of those ministers are idiots. First thing they get is a benefit. 
the first thing they get is the benefit of peace and tranquility and and prosperity. I mean, tranquility, prosperity. Preachers don't get in trouble. They don't. They drive just as bad as anybody else. They don't get tickets. They get drunk like anybody else. They don't get disorderly conduct. They beat their wives and fight their wives. They, seldom do they get charged. We know they fags, punks, and sisters as president as as ministers. They don't go to jail. They cover it up and then present it to you, and then you accept it. And those that you haven't caught are still asses because they're not telling you that you belong to a religion that the same individual that has you in bondage belongs to. He'll tell you that his Jesus and that Jesus is the same Jesus. He'll tell you that his God and that God is the same God. And you're sitting up there in church every Sunday trying to figure out why they turn your lights off. And then they use Jewish psychology to tell you, well, you can get a job. McDonald's is hiring. Go to the gas station. Sweep up in front of the gas station. Get your pack of cigarettes. You don't have to steal. How much stupid does that sound? Here's a man with a house. Hot light bill, gas bill, house bill, uh, gas, uh, uh, automobile, upkeep. Got to go to work every day, and he can't find a job. He's laid off or fired. Oh, he didn't have to steal. What else he going to do? See, the worst thing about us as so-called niggas, we're stupid. They took the logic thoughts or the process of logical thinking out of our heads with that ignorant-ass school we went to. So you don't think, you don't even look at the situation to see, why am I in this predicament? How did I get here? Listen. If you're on the low, if you're in the lower eight one hundred and eighty degrees, which is the devil's world, if you're in the lower one hundred and eighty degrees, you can be manipulated. I don't give a damn who you are. I don't care how much education you got. I don't care what kind of clothes you wear or what kind of automobile you drive. You're an idiot. They can manipulate you. A lot of us say, oh, no, they can't do that. I do this, I do that. I can get away. No, 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 no. It's just like the test. I did a show, seems like uh, 300 years ago, but I did a show when I was on television. It was called Bombs, Babies, and Sociology. And what I talked about was the manipulation of our children and our society, and our community, not society, by the powers to be. I saw this on television. They didn't. They called it bombs, babies, and biology. That's what they call bombs, babies, and biology. And they made it look like it was a good program to deal with. But the more I looked at it, or the deeper I got into it, I said, they're talking about us. Listen to me. Damn it. If you have two dog cages, and you got 20, let's say with the same breed, you got 20 Rottweilers. You put 10 in one and 10 in the other. The 10 to the right the right cage and the left cage. The cage in the right, you train them to do tricks and to be peaceful. On the on the left, you feed him gunpowder in his milk. 
and teach them to fight. Now, when you let three of the right dogs come out, one of the black of the evil dogs or the trained uh, killer dogs out, you're going to have a major, major problem. They all look alike. They all Negroes. Then they'll let, um, there were three, they got six, um, uh, seven more. So they let out two, try to follow me on this. With education, they're the higher breed of the dog. They write in the papers. They can't understand why the three and the one, which is four, they don't get along. They're fighting. Black on black crime. Rockwiler on Rockwiler crime. You can't ask to be free. You cannot be set out in the community because you kill each other every weekend. You kill more in your own community than all the police departments shooting Put together. You fall for that bullshit. You say, you know you're right. You never think about it. You are the dummy in the lower 180. The whole 180 is devil's, is God, is devil's world. They have to com- com- continuously manipulate you so you make them old dumbass statements like that nigga down in McKinney. Texas, I saw him on the news this morning, whining like a fag. What, was he on the news? No, he was on uh, uh, YouTube. They put him on uh, Hanny, Hanny, Hannaby, or whatever that pecker was named, on Fox News. Big old black nigga, big nigga. No mustache. I'm, I'm scared and reluctant to deal with black men with no mustache. I don't know why, but they all turn out to be on the other side every time. Every time you see a nigga without a, a male without a mustache, you better be suspicious of it. Now you make your own choice. I made mine. You need to make your own choice. But that's where you should look at first. They had this guy on the air, Sean Handy, Hanny, Hannaby, Hannity, whatever his name is. Oh, he was so happy to have that nigga on. Oh, I'm so glad to have him. Tell us about the pool, swimming pool. Well, the blackie wanted to talk about death threats. He got on the local news down there and, and made it clear that the thugs, now you pick that, you figure out who the thugs were, that were doing all the fighting, running and screaming, need to take their butt back where they come from. They are the ones that cause the disturbance. So first of all, the question is, who are thugs, number one? And he claims he was at the pool. He claimed that that community is a wonderful, it's God's sent community. When you look it up, you'll find that it's a affluent community. Who lives in a affluent community? Rich, white folks and niggas. Married to white women. I don't know who he's married to, but I can tell you this. Whoever he's married to, that's who he loves. And for him to make these statements, I, <laughs> you need to go look at it. It's on, the, it's on YouTube. So I said, what is he on here? Well, he went on Hannity because he had 20 death threats and, the, and this big old he got to be 6'2", a good 240, 230, 240. And he's afraid. And his family, I don't know, he's got children. And he had the audacity to say, well, I can't say too much because uh, they're investigating my threats. And uh, they told me not to let them know, nobody know who's investigating. He was scared to death. Hannaby wouldn't let him cover himself. Hannaby kept trying to drive him to the fact that these thugs were jumping over the fence, jumping on women with three babies. He kept trying to say, no, I, no, I didn't see that. I, 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 
So Annie said, oh, okay, then good. Get on out. I'm glad you should. Blah, blah. He said, wait, I ain't through. Wait, I ain't through. Now he's going to try to say that it wasn't like what came out was not what it was like. We got a good community down. It was a mess. That's all I can tell you. It was a damn mess. He spoke out of turn. He came from where he loved, from what he loved. You got to look at this thing like it is. Why? You got to quit trying to be good. Sometimes it don't work. We've been good too long. I told you, 50 years ago, Martin Luther King went. 50, March on Washington, begging. They went up there on horseback, stuff like that, a wagon. I remember seeing a wagon. In Jet Magazine. Figure that out. And today, things have not changed. We have been begging. We're trying to be nice to these people. Elijah Muhammad said separation is the only answer. But y'all are scared to separate. Why? Because you want a car. You can build your own car. You built that one. You want to live in a luxury, uh, luxurious uh, a community. Build your own. We had our own communities. We had and owned everything all the way up to 1860. But Peckerwood did not create his position. He did it with a pencil. He did it with a pencil. Civil War. I guarantee you it was nothing like nothing like what he portrays it in the books. The original Civil War was fought in 1855 between the Powhatan and the Algonquins or the Iroquois Confederation. I was going to deal with that a little bit today, but I, I, I'm going to save that for another show. Now we don't even recognize my stick. That's why I got to wait. I got to figure out what's wrong with it. But anyway, my point is we are in a hocus Focus trick bag. And we can't figure it out. Or better yet, you can't see the forest for the trees. We can't figure this thing out because we got so many Uncle Remus ass sambos in our community. And you know I don't call, call the worst one is a preacher because he has an audience every Sunday. The Jesse Jacksons and the uh, Al Sharpton, they got to wait till there's a crisis, and the Peckerwoods send them in like bloodhounds, calm it down. But the preacher don't need a, a riot or a disturbance. He'll create one every Sunday morning when you show up, singing, we shall overcome, and I love Jesus. How can you be worshiping a, a Jesus, the same Jesus that that crook worships, that police officer worships, and nobody's talking about it? I'm not saying you got to throw Jesus to the wolves. I'm trying to say, why don't you ask them? How can they do that? How can he shoot down a person if he's a Christian? That never comes up. But they want to switch back to the mad dogs and the trained dogs that they created. See, when I saw this movie, Bombs, Babies, and Biology, They had a box with six rooms in the box. There was no top on it. And there was doorways in each room so you could go from one room to the next room. As they discussed this travesty, each mouse needed one ounce 
of, of food and one ounce of water every day. So for X number of days, let's throw in 30. 30 days, they put it in there. In the meantime, while they wasn't eating, they were playing, dancing, boogalooing. They was having a good time. The second month, they cut it from one ounce to a half ounce, or better yet, they did small, three-fourths of an ounce of each. They could begin to see and analyze the irritability of these mice. They were not acting the same way, but they was they was cool. They were not. When they got down to a fourth of an ounce of water to a fourth of an ounce of food, the mice was fighting each other. And when it went to zero, they were eating each other. What does that tell you? This was a PBS type documentary. Bombs based. I've been, don't, it'd be fruitless to try to find it. I've been trying to find that thing ever since, my, I saw it in 1959, but that ought to tell you something. I was in Dugway, Utah, at the Bonneville, uh, Dugway, Utah, Bonneville Salt Flat, where I was at, state, station, 1959. That has never left my mind, mind sight. Never has it left. So now I take that same concept and put it into urban communities. Anytime the corporation wants something, they manipulate the community. Turn their agents loose after they drink coffee and play golf together as to what to say and what to do, especially them jack leg ass freaks. I can't stand them. I'm telling you. Nat Turner and all them brothers back in the day, they were real ministers. They weren't preachers. They were ministers. Ministers of war, ministers of information. They had job assignments. They changed it from ministers to reverends or preachers. If you into a religious kick, they ain't there. Ain't no big deal. But the only reason, think of what they called it in 19, uh, 1865 when Lincoln, when he freed so-called, freed the slaves. So-called free. I'm going to try to look it up on break. It was called the three. Woo. I'm getting old, y'all. So Ain't much more I can say about it. I just can't remember. Badges. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Somebody's on my side. Thank you. It's called the three badges of the Emancipation Proclamation. Number one, free the people. Number two, find, uh, uh, compensate the people, finance them. Number three, teach them how to be financed and how to be free. That's where the ministers came in. That was the original minister. Because remember, going into the 1850s, we were Muslims. We were studying Islam. Christianity had it was here, but we knew what Christianity was for and what it was good for. They knew then what I'm trying to tell you now. It has got you nowhere. Go back. Man, I, I, don't, I can't get into it. I got proof. 1844, 1824, um, excuse me, 
1644. Back when they first set up the first of 13 colonies. Who they had to bring Christianity in to challenge Islam. There's no room for, for Christianity in true Islam. Now, you can, you can stay there with it. No big deal. But you can't bring it over here. One powerful, I don't want to call it an item, but one powerful position of Christianity is one wife. And one husband, one husband and one wife. Prior to that, you were allowed by the teachings of the villages and or the tribes and or the nations and or the confederations. Even today, well, 1997, I went to Africa. And it was a rule in Africa. I went to Ghana. And the rule in Ghana was, and when it came to uh, matrimony, you, a man could have as many wives as he could afford. I'm trying to attack it because you don't know nothing about the culture of these African nations. All you can come from is the bullshit that they taught you right here in this school. So shut the hell up. I've been over there. I saw it and understood what they were talking about. Marriage over there, they don't have divorces. Marriage over there is sacred. It's, it's, it's hard to even try and understand where you're going and where you've been if you've never been anywhere. And reading books is only a small portion of understanding the world or understanding who you are. You can't, you don't even compete with, even with a PhD in anything. You don't even compete with a native that's never been to school in Africa. It's nowhere near. So you can fight back and say, well, I got a suit, I got a... I got a car, I got a house, I got a wife. Well, then, okay, stay with that. But you don't have freedom, punk. You are not free. Well, if I'm living this good, let me call it freedom. That's good, too. That's good, too. But there's a problem with that. Once you die, you're telling your family, those individuals that you produce, to go to hell. Because as soon as you leave, the system, the government, the corporations are coming after everything you got. And if you didn't teach your children, because with them fine suits and clothes and, 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 and beautiful cars and all that shit, most of the time the child ain't get the child ain't worth a damn. Because if you bought if you're born into wealth, how do you know how to keep it? Because you never were not with it. There you go. So if you never were, were without it, you don't know how to protect it. To be wealthy is, is easy. Maintaining wealth is where the problem is because the devil is coming after you. You think I'm lying? Add some of them uh, heavyweights in the, in the music industry. Too legit to quit. What was his name? He was a millionaire overnight and lost it just as fast. Sly Stewart. Same thing. Sly the Family Stone. All of these guys were black men. And the devil do not like black men because a black man is too close to God. And God is in the upper 180. Stephen A. Smith, I was surprised. He was arguing with that guy one day. 
that guy, that pecker would sit across from Skip. That's our best idea. And they were talking about black wealth in the black community. And which blackie in the community, they were talking about sports, can be recognized by the black community and strive from the black community. So Stephen A. Smith said, if you take uh, 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 AI, What's his name? Iverson. Here you go. And then you take Floyd Mayweather. Two millionaires. I didn't know AI was a millionaire, but that's where the conversation was. Put them on one side, and then you put LeBron James, Magic Johnson, and Michael Jordan on the other side. Question. Which one of those groups are more beneficial, more profitable, and more recognized by the black community. I should take it recognized out because they all are going to look at Jordan, that bunch over there. But you ain't going to get none of that money over there with them niggas. Why? The European corporations have engulfed them. They created that. These two, you can throw James Brown in on the left over here. You can throw uh, whoo, Wilson Pickett over here. You can throw, I'm looking at him with his cape on. Woo! I can't think of his name. But all of these guys bought their own selves. They bought their own contracts. They began to create their own economy. And they hate uh, uh, Floyd Mayweather. I think his name is Floyd Mayweather. And he likes for him to call him Money Mayweather. point is, we need to start looking at things like this. And we need to start supporting things like this. Now, in the second hour, I'm going to give you my program of survival. It does not include marching or washing, going to church. No, none of that bullshit. None of it. Notice I say bullshit, and I mean it, because my spirit I deal with every day. I don't wait till Sunday and go in and talk shit and give up my money, then turn around and be a nigga from Monday to Friday or Saturday. I'm not into that. What you see here is what you get, and I've seen some brothers out there that feel and act the same way. We are concerned about our people. And where we are, what, where and how and, and we are concerned is so deep that I'm willing to give my life for what I believe and what I think. There's no time for me to punk out now. You can't get any of those elected officials, any of those so-called Negro leaders, any of those so-called civil rights all-stars, any of them jack leg ass preachers, none of them will give up their life for what they believe. I guarantee you. You got brothers out here working every day reading, doing research, trying to figure out what the situation is and how to get out from under it. And you can only get to the 180, upper 180, one at a time. You can't take a, a bus and take all these niggas up there. Why? Because they're not ready. It's like I said about the millionaire, black, the nigga millionaire, children ain't shit. Why? Because they never experienced nothing. They've always had what they want. If you haven't lived in the lower 180, there ain't no room for you in the upper 180. You got to know what pain is. You got to know what suffering is. And once you do, see, to, to discuss it is difficult. 
I can do it, but for you to understand it, it's difficult. Because probably a lot of you out there thank you in the 180. And I can tell you right now, bullshit. You the worst nigga in town if you thank you in the 180. You either know it or you don't. If you thank it, that means you believe it. And if you believe something, that means you're a Christian. And ain't no Christians in the 180, upper 180. You can almost answer that. Why yourself? You can't go up there because you going to ride on Jesus' back. You got to go up there on your own. And if Jesus is there, you're going to be on the same plane with him when you get up there. If he's there. I never should have said that because I know damn well he ain't there. But that's my beliefs. But I got to have these beliefs in order for me to do what I do every day. I talk to my friends who have helped me on my programs. When we get busy and do what we got to do, we ain't got time for nothing else. 24-7, we doing something. What you do today? I'm studying this. I'm studying that. Trying to find the key. Trying to find the, the, the way to get out from under. We're trying to find a way to get to our ancestors who laid the path, who had everything prior to the European. And I personally think there are some criteria that you should understand before you even try to get out from under this thing. I think we're going to talk about it in the next hour. Because we need to get busy. And I'm telling you, we need to get busy, and I mean right away. Okay? Now, I will open up the lines next hour. And if there's any uh, chat room, if you've got any questions, all you need to do is look at the headline. you got a six, 16-year veteran school teacher of the fourth grade. Listen to me the most crucial years of your child. She's been teaching for 16 years and a racist to the bone. A very ignorant individual on life itself. All you got to do is read her her, her uh, social media. Fourth grade. And she sends Johnny home every day with an A because he knows that the white man is superior. She taught him that, and she gives him an A. He go in there and ask about Ron March, Malcolm X, Elijah Muhammad, Noble Drew Ali. He gets an F. Get out of here with that mess. Think about that. There's a police officer in the same city Ten-year veterans on the state police, a six-year veteran on the police department. He's a supervisor. And when he has a situation, I don't care what it is, he acts like one of these mad dogs I talked about that's been eating uh, uh, raw meat and and uh, gunpowder. And then they make excuses. Oh, he had two runs that were very devastating. Oh, oh, yeah? He had two runs that were devastating, and he lost control. And he's got a gun? What about other crises that he supposedly had? And he used the police uh, 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 a secrecy, blue secrecy, when he made a mistake with a bad shoot. Or someone in his department makes a bad shoot. Oh, we'll cover that up. Was any witnesses? No. Oh, shit. Don't worry about it. We'll fix it. I'll call the morgue and have them turn the turn the uh, autopsy around. Where it ain't this, where it ain't that. Or it is this, and ain't is that. We'll put some uh, gun gunpowder residue on his hand and say he had a pistol. Oh, yeah, we'll fix that. Don't worry about it. 
I've been in those types of situations before because I had a bad run and this and that. These are the ones that are supposedly serving and protecting. And this one is a supervisor. I'll say it once and I'll say it again. We are in such a hocus pocus trick bag that we can't see the forest for the trees. Why? Y'all listen to this Farrakhan package and he, he, why he, how he explained where he's been and why he, why he's been underground. I thought about my situation over at a black-owned radio state, television station. Why I'm not on? Y'all need to look. At it. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take a. We're going to take a quick break, and we're going to be back after the break to deal with this madness. I promised that we would talk uh, about solutions. Anybody and everybody can complain, but if you don't have some type of solution, it's all for naught. And I think that we have have uh, for, for so long, I told you I'm uh, I'm up in age, three quarters of three quarters of a century. I'll just say that three quarters of a century, and I've been at this thing a long time. I don't know it all, but I know what makes me feel comfortable and makes me think I'm on the right path. And as long as I'm on that path and I have no glitches, I stay on that path. So let's talk about setting ourselves free. Now, since we know that we were all free in 1400, especially when that when that punk showed up, Christopher Columbus, 1492, we was all free. We were in America minding our own business. We were in the land of of uh, fruit and honey. We were in the land of nothing but tranquility. Now, our wars that we had were our economic development processes. Okay? Not saying that there was not evil, not saying that there was not treachery and all that, but the wars were all dictated and controlled by the confederations. That's why Big Mama would always join another clan, tribe, which created the nations, and then it would create a confederation. Once you created the, better yet, once you was on the path of confederation, your life became a better life. As we come forward going into the 1500, there were heavyweight chiefs. That's what I wanted to talk about. I'm going to do this next week. But there were heavyweights, and I got the names of them. I got the history of them. We're talking about the grandfather. One of the end of chiefs that was tough was the grandfather of Pocahontas. And I'm going to get all them names. I, I was a little reluctant today to deal with it because I can't pronounce the names. And then I brought my uh, U uh, U USB stick, and it's not working right. I don't know what what the problem is, but it's, it seems to be burnt out. I don't know. Seriously, I don't know what the problem is. But my point is we're going to deal with it. Now, as you come forward, you, 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 get, you get into what we know as United States. See, you got to know where United States came from. For clar clarification, I'm going to call it United Colonies. Those 13 colonies were the only, as of this day, United States. And their seat of government of the 13 states, 13 colonies, was 
a district known as District of Columbia. Think about it. If you can get that in your mind, you can see freedom. You can see how we can get out of this madness. We owned all of the land. We gave them a small portion, very small, and told them to do their business, take it over wherever they come from, leave us alone. Now, the ones that made those decisions could not speak for the entire America. They could only speak on the lands that they owned. This is why it's difficult to know this history because you'll know that the land was owned by us before the European even came this way, before he even came on earth, before he was created. Do you hear me? You understand what I'm saying? The 13 colonies were the original United States. For clarification, I'm going to start calling them the United Colonies, where the seat of their government was a district known as Columbia. Those individuals, after multitudes of wars and, quote, unquote, negotiations, quote, unquote, so-called treaties and agreements, they were given that land to produce commerce for their motherland, England, their motherland, England. Our chiefs owned, owned all of America. There was no need for paperwork because it was taken by these, these heavyweights. Now, this one heavyweight, and I'm searching diligently because I can tie this heavyweight into the Power Tan and the Confe uh, Iroquois Confederation, quote unquote, AKA Algonquin Confederation. Noble Drew Ali's lifeline came out of the Algonquin Confederation. When you look up the Iroquois Confederation, it was a Cherokees, a name that the European gave, came out of that so-called Algonquin Confederation. I was told that Powhatan was a chief's name. Iroquois was a chief's name belong to the Algonquin nation. They fought each other. In 1800s, they fought each other. And that's when the European saw an opportunity to not only take a side of victory in that war, 1855, but he also saw an opportunity to create a nation known as, let me back up, a corporation known as United States of America, Inc. Notice how that's worded. If I told you America was here first, I told you the Europeans came in in four, late 1500s, fought like cats and dogs all the way up through 1600s, trying to get a toll finally settled on an agreement with the Moors. That agreement was called the United States Constitution, original Constitution. That was nothing more than a contract, nothing more than a treaty. That's it. You and I had nothing to do with that treaty. We are still in America. Physically, mentally, we think we're in that bullshit. 
This is where the war is, in your brain. This is where freedom is, in your brain. We don't have to talk guns praying we shall overcome, all that matters. We need to get on the path of righteousness, the path of spiritual freedom. Elijah Muhammad had the key. The more you learn yourself, the less you'll see of the enemy. I know that to be a fact. He does. He cannot stay in the same space you are. That's why he created the police department, the enforcement agencies. All that came in play in 1933. CIA, NC, NC, NSA, uh, Homeland Security. You've seen that recently. All of this came in play after 1933. You'll find none of this crap in the Constitution. None of it. It's just a matter of clearing your mind. This is the answer. Once you clear your mind, now you can start studying. Now, number one, how did you get in this hocus pocus trick bag? Who put you in? How did they get you in? And how in the hell can you get out? Let's just think about that for a minute. Every blackie in America is catching hell. Either he's living in a dream, and he better love that Peckerwood, and he better look like that nigga I saw on TV this morning, the chief of police of Dallas, Texas. He better not have a mustache. And I'm going to step further and say, I think that guy, y'all need to see this guy. He looked like a clone to me. He had no expression. He answered questions like it was like he was a robot. He didn't leave any answer a question unanswered. And as he walked on and started, he walked off the same way. He had on a pair of glasses that looked like a pair that Clark Kent would wear as he ran into the phone booth to switch up. <clears throat> Come out that other clone, Superman. Same shit. Strange, very strange, and I'm really talking about the shooting in Dallas, Texas. Y'all got to see him. He'll be on the day and tomorrow. You tell me what he looked like. He looked human. He didn't look natural. Unbelievable. Okay. And another thing, while all these crises are going on, Every time a whitey comes on the screen, he's committed a crime. But when a blackie comes on the scene, he's trying to quill the crime. He's trying to take, make excuses for the crime. Same, oh, which I can call the name, Melvo and Mohammed. Y'all remember Melvo and Mohammed? About, uh, uh, I want to say Daddy Bush, but they keep telling me it was Junior. So whenever the year Junior went in office, 9-11, No, no. 2009? What year was 9-11, Wally B? Two thousand and two? Okay. Well, Not nine, ever since 9-11, I was saying. Melvo and Muhammad were the two blackies that was riding around in a makeshift station wagon, makeshift automobile that had a peephole in the trunk where he was sniping and killing people from the trunk of the car. Y'all remember that? Do you remember who cracked the case? 
He never saw, well, I won't say he never saw. I never saw the chief. Well, he was in he was in different cities. He was driving. So the county sheriff took over the, the investigation. That's how, I don't really know what city he was riding in because they were driving around. It seemed like they were doing it on the weekend because there was a purpose. There was an agenda. You never heard about it because they never gave you a motive. Why were they doing that? But my point is, that's a whole different another story altogether. But the chief of police, I mean, the, the sheriff was a black man. He solved the case and he disappeared from limelight. Should be told. I would take that to the movie. That's the story that should be told. Where did them niggas come from? Why were they doing what they did? Why were they killing white people? Where was the anger? Where, what was the motive? And if you look at the death list, each one of the persons that were killed had an agenda. The first one was a black man, if I'm not mistaken. He was a multimillionaire. Or in the process of being a multimillionaire. On the internet. Y'all, you know, y'all don't know nothing about this. Y'all don't know nothing about this. I, you know, I, when I get to rapping, I just get to running into stuff. And, and, but anyway, my point to you is you got to start, you got to know what. You got to know what. Uh, Wally B. You got to know what. Uh, uh, game you in. Can't, you don't want to start in this madness and not know who you really are. I didn't even know you were sitting there. Sorry. But anyway, let's talk about it. First of all, you're in America. You're not in the United States. You are in America. You are an American. I am an indigenous American. My DNA said it. Their DNA said that I was, in part, an indigenous American. All right, let's go from there. And I did it with uh, ancestral, ancestry DNA. No, ancestry by DNA. That's the company that I that I used. If you know of Sister Doctor Yaffa Bay, she turned me on to it, and I, and I leave. But anyway, we got to know the parameters of this game. Number one, I said it. I said it again. We were in America all the time. This concept of coming from Africa comes from a period known as Pangea. Look up, look up the word Pangea. So we ain't even got to talk about that. But I guarantee you one thing, we never came over on ships. I bet you that. There's no records anywhere that can prove that ships brought us over here. Even the figures that they attempt to give you don't jive. I can do a show on that if you if you want to uh, deal with it. I can do a show on that. Oh, nine eleven was in uh, nine eleven was in two o one. Okay, that's about right. Two o one. That's when they were shooting people haphazardly, randomly. Nobody knows what that was about. Never was there any discussion about it. Once they found out who Malvo and, and uh, Muhammad were, I don't know what happened to Malvo, no, Muhammad, but Malvo went on trial, supposedly, in Virginia because it had the death penalty. We haven't heard any more about that. So I don't know. 
One thing about us, black folk, our memory is shot. And I think I know why our memory is shot. I heard something today was scary. From Louis Farrakhan, mercury. Mercury deals with the uh, cells in your brain. How do you get mercury? Chemtrail. Yes. Y'all need to look at that thing with Farrakhan. It's very informative. Especially what went on when Bobby Kennedy was living. I'm going to go back and listen to it again. When he wanted Farrakhan to help him do something. And the corporations and everyone was totally against it. And they couldn't stop him. So there was an assassination. Y'all can tie that in any way you want. I ain't even going there. But everything that's happened to us, look what look what we're going through. They murder one of us. We raise up in anger. They know who the killer is. They bring in the civil rights all stars and the and the Jack Lake ass preachers. We calm down. The news media comes out and justify the killing. That's by design, y'all. You've seen enough in the last year that makes you say something is wrong. Now we got a trial in uh, a case in uh, Cleveland where they killed that Tamar young boy, 12 years old. It's taken them seven years. I don't know how long. I, I, listen, my mind is my mind is shot. But it's taken an extremely long time for them to even make up their mind as to what happened. And there was only three people involved. Think about that. There was only three people involved and a motor vehicle. That's it. It wasn't no demonstrations. It wasn't no we shall overcome. None of that. We're talking about three peck of woods, I mean two peck of woods and a 12-year-old boy and a squad car. And they still haven't decided. They have this weekend, past weekend, this week. That they got to do something about. So now, the prosecutor who was elected to prosecute and serve, just like the police, he going to punk out. We're going to send this to a grand jury. Listen to what's going on. You're living in this. The next murder could be your child. The next murder could be one of them rich niggas that think they got it made. Or that hammerhead that's on TV from McKinney, uh, Texas, that's trying to say that the police did a good job down there body slamming a 14-year-old teenage female, girl, daughter, and pulling his gun out on other teenagers. They made an excuse for him. Now they left this nigga hanging. He's going to run his mouth like he knows something. I know what he knows. He want to be left alone and live out in a suburb where everything is hunky-dory. He could end up like that other blackie and move to the suburbs. He was 70 years old, went for a morning walk. I can remember the incident, but I can't remember the time, the, the town or the man. But it was in the suburbs. Because he said in the hospital after they beat the shit out of him, he, he said, I moved to the suburbs for safety. My question is, from whom? In the black hood, they create the good dogs and the bad dogs and let them out. So you, if you escape that, okay. But now you're going out to the place where those individuals are the ones who created that madness. They beat the crap out of that guy. Paralyzed, he's all messed up. Unbelievable. I'm telling you, if you just sit down and think, don't get angry. Just sit down and think. You'll start seeing a pattern. We're living with aliens. These people don't even exist. 
They don't belong here. They don't belong here. We got nerve to fall in love and marry. What the hell? Yes, yes, yes. You got a good one. Okay, good. You got a good one. That's probably what that nigga's trying to tell us down there in McKinney. He married a good one. We don't need this trouble out here. This is a good community. I don't know what it's going to take, but I tell you what's going to happen. It worse. And we got a major problem. We have youth. And guess what? The youth are not afraid of them pigs. Now, they're not going to win. Don't don't start acting crazy. But I, I hope we got some youth listening to me or some some parents that are concerned and will talk to their children. They want to murder as many as we can. So if you revolt, it's all justified. They are pushing the envelope to make it be a riot, make it be a uprising, so they can set up the... Do y'all hear the, about this Dallas, Texas situation? I can only tell you what they put on the news. But I want to tell you now about the SWAT team that has, in their military equipment, they have a 50 caliber machine, I mean, 50 caliber rifle. And if anyone has ever seen a 50 caliber bullet, it's about the size circumference of my thumb. And I would guess that it would be, I want to see six inches, but that might be too big. It's a good five inches long. Big. It's so big and powerful that when this guy drove up in this parking lot and stopped the vehicle, they shot the, the motor block with a 50 caliber round and blew it up. They fired another round through the windshield of the driver's side. They say they don't know if they hit him or not. 50 caliber. And then they put a white expert on and said, if that was a 50 caliber, and if it did touch that individual, he's dead. Damn thing is like a, a, a hand grenade. During the 67 riots in Detroit, they brought National Guard Peckerwoods from up north. They had never seen black people before. Put them over there on 12th Street and Grand Boulevard. All you people that live in this area, y'all know what I'm talking about. And they set up roadblocks. They set up a curfew. All the street lights came on, and when the National Guard realized that they were targets under those lights, six of them stood under the street light with a 50 caliber machine gun. I mean, 50 caliber rifles. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. They were 30 caliber, smaller, 30 caliber and shot hundreds of rounds. They finally knocked the, knocked the, the light out because they couldn't hit it. They, they, could, they didn't know what they were doing. But what they did, once the light got out, they was getting away from it as they fired, as they walked away. It knocked several chimneys off of people's houses, brick chimneys. This was in 67. That's when they had 30 caliber. They're not bragging, but they're saying that these SWAT teams in Dallas, Texas, have 50 caliber because they're getting ready for terror. I'm telling you, the answer is, first of all, let's go into the recovery room where it all starts. This is where it starts. When they trick with undisclosed information, they trick the mother to give up the baby. 
so she will not be arrested for kidnap. Yeah, yeah. I made that up. I just made that up. And I can read in the Michigan Compiled Laws section Let me be lucky. MCL section. I know this ain't going to be right. I tried to do this quick the other day. Whoa. 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 It's called the... I don't have... Oh. I'm close. I just need to get the second. I got 333.2882. It should be. I'm going to try 28, 25. 25. See what happens. Oh. Mercy. Mercy, mercy. Well, yeah, of course, my computer, my computer went out. I think I can fix it. I've been I've been working on there we go. I've been working on this baby. And uh, I know how to go get it. So let's try it again. All right. There is a Michigan law and it's not it's called Michigan compiled law. So it's not under that. Let me try one more thing before I uh, step over. Let me go hold on one second, hold on one second. Hopefully I can do it, MCL. This is very important because I know you ain't going to believe me. So, uh, uh, well, I got that Michigan. I got close to it. Let me tell you what it says. Parent, the Parenting Gene Act. What is the section? Anyway, I can prove to you that every child that's born in the United States, the mother, upon delivery, it's like a ship, like, like a, your mama's a vessel, and she goes to the dock, which is the delivery room, and she brings in the cargo, the baby. The baby must have a bill of lading. The paperwork has to be, because we're talking about admiralty law. So the paper has to coincide with the delivery, think about it, with the cargo, and it should be turned on over to the owner's of it. Okay? That's how it works. So mama carries the baby. She's at sea. She goes into labor. She she moves into the docks. And once, uh, I guess you say, break water, they move her to the delivery room, the dock, so she can drop the cargo. Okay? I'm going to pull out the law. And I Tuesday or out online. I'll, I'm going to put it on my. I'll put it on. Uh, I know what I'll do. I'm going to put it on my website. Oh yes. I'm going to put it on my website. The steps of Michigan's law. Now every state has this law. You got to find it. But the law is a deliberate founding. Childhood, founding parenting, meaning that the baby was found by your mother. It's like your mama, now all of a sudden she's walking down the dock and see this cargo sitting on the dock. She knows it's not hers, so she takes it in and gives it to Department of Vital Statistics. 
All of this is, is put in, in writing in the state law, your constitution, state constitution. That's why they call you the ward of the state. This is the beginning of freedom. If you can understand this, I'm giving you two keys. Number one, you are an American. Not you Europeans, not you Chinese, and I mean not Chinese, all of you uh, 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 English, Germany, Switzerland, all that. No, y'all need to go home where you come from. Take your peck of wood ass back across the water, stay over there. This land belongs to us, people of color. We've been here all the time. And don't bring up that damn middle passage bullshit. And then they, they try to trap you. Are you trying to tell me that uh, no slaves come over on the ship? No, I ain't trying to tell you that. But i tell you one thing. 90% of all Negroes, colored, blacks, that, that are here today, they were here all the time. 90% of them, been there all the time. How did I become an indigenous American if I come over here on the ship? My, my DNA comes from my mama and my papa. So bullshit. Now they have the audacity to give me 85% Sahara African. They made that up. But that 85% should be known as Pangea. They should call the 85 that's Sahara African, they should call it Pangea, period. Because we were all over this mass known as Earth in the beginning. Earthquakes, storms, cataclysmic earthquakes, stuff like that. They created the water known as Atlantic, these oceans. They weren't here all the time. We were here where we could walk across. They tell you that the uh, city of Atlantis, they tell you this, is in the Atlantic Ocean. That's where the name comes from, Atlantis. So it had to be a solid mass at one time. How are you going to build a city underground? Pacific Ocean. If you know anything about Hawaii, it's not a continent. It's a mountain range. Seven mountain tips create what is known as Hawaii. We live there. Our queen was there. The land was called Mu. Come on, y'all. Do some work. Do some research. They're not going to put this in books where you can flip over there. Oh, where you find that? At? Oh, let me buy that book. No, no, no. I'm giving you the heads up. Look it up. Look up M U U. Just move. Just put that in there. Then when you put M U U R, those are the inhabitants of Mu. were so intelligent with high spiritual living, they knew, the queen knew that a cataclysmic earthquake was coming. She moved her people to higher grounds. Where do you think the higher grounds were? The day is called California, Mexico, Washington State, Alaska. If you can't get this, y'all can give it up. But you, you'll never be free. Because what I'm giving you come out of the 180, upper 180. Where your mind is, is in the lower 180, which will lead you to nothing but slavery or death. Because you are in a comatose walking dead man. Dead man walking. Dead man walking. 
if you can't put this together, and we can, I'm going to talk about this. You only got two things to study between now and Tuesday. Number one, research Jamestown. Research Pocahontas. Put in there Pocahontas. I can't pronounce his name. I said, I had it so I could. And I'm telling you, my stuff is rolled, rolled out. I'll have it too. Okochin. Opachin. No. Opachinu. Opachinu. Oh! Opachinu. Don't ask me to spell it. Opachinu. I'm going to put that on my website. There's two things I'm going to put on my website. Opachinu own more land in America than anyone else. All of the Louisiana so-called, all of that belonged to one man at one time, one, one chief at one time, his people. Opachinu. Opachinu. I think I got it right. But they, and then John Smith came here for the purpose of stealing Pocahontas and marrying her because she was the owner of the land. She was a giver of the land. Our culture, remember, is patriarch. What am I talking about? Matriarch. M. Matriarch. I'm sorry. Matriarch. I get excited. Matriarch. And by being matriarch, that means that the women own everything. That's why we have trouble today with women. Not not negative trouble, but trouble understanding them. Understanding getting along with them. Because we've been taught from the European that we are supposed to run the house. That's not true. That is not true. And that's where one of our major problems lie right there in building our nation. I don't have a problem with a woman being the owner of the land and the land giver. My job is to protect her only. So protect her, I got to feed her. I got to bring stuff to her. Don't need to think about this. Because we're getting into a period. We're, in this, we're into the long, hot summer. you got two major operations getting ready to happen. One, NAACP wants to march 180, some odd, 68 miles. You know there's going to be some pot shots and shooting and killing. Then you want to turn around. I heard Louis Farquhar say it today. He wants another march on Washington. Or better yet, a million man march. I have no problem with any of it. But I'm telling you, that's not the answer. Now, it can be a, a, a sign of recognition. You can make up any reason you want why you want to go. I don't have a problem with it. But if you don't get what I'm telling you, you can forget it. You're not, none of that's going to help you if you don't get what I'm telling you. America belongs to us. We did not come from Africa. Being came here with the intent to take over by design in late 1500. Opa to know. Knew it. He was trying to make his brother un oh I gotta I, I, I gotta do the do research on that. I got it. And the good sister Turner, Stephanie Turner, may ask her to come back and help me explain that to you. But those are the two factors. Number one, Pocahontas era, fourteen, sixteen hundred, and the birth certificate birth certificate. We need to learn, understand it, and we can set ourselves free. 
Because you're never free if they open the gate. You're not free. Because they can shut the gate any time they get ready. That's what that Emancipation Proclamation is all about. It's going to set the slaves free. Oh, yeah? And they shut the door the next day. Martin Luther King, March on Works, Civil Rights Program. We're going to be protected by civil rights. Now they're protecting everybody but black folks. Sissies, fag, punks, punks, pimps, prostitutes, preachers. All the P's are protected through civil rights. I like that. I haven't said that in a while. Punks, pimps, prostitutes, and preachers. All the P's. Never done anything for it. We need to get busy. And we're at the top of the hour. Those that are online, I didn't get any questions. I guess everybody listening today. 